Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is my House of the Dragon season two video all about how Stark coming back into the story, Winterfell. It's great to finally go back up there after so much of the main show focused on their characters later in the timeline. So I'll explain who all the new main Stark characters are and what their role in the story is compared to the story during Game of Thrones. Because there are a lot of familiar events and types of characters, archetypes, references to what's happening now later in the timeline, least of all the White Walkers, the Wall, the Night King, Aegon's prophecy of A Song of Ice and Fire, I'll be doing all kinds of House of the Dragon bonus videos during the off season. Be sure to subscribe to get them all. But during House of the Dragon season one, we didn't see a lot of the Starks. We saw a little bit of House Stark, like Rickon Stark here was the current Lord of Winterfell and bent the knee to Rhaenyra when she was much younger. Gusting out of the distant north. I, Rickon Stark, Lord of Winterfell. Aegon saw absolute darkness. But aside from that, they only mentioned them again during the finale, and that was about it. Like just a name drop, because they're gonna be much bigger during season two. There has never lived a Stark who forgot an oath, and with House Stark, the North will follow. And one of the reasons why they're so much closer to Rhaenyra's side in the Dance of the Dragons is because they went through a similar event that what's happening to Rhaenyra right now with the Greens trying to steal the Iron Throne from her, and because of a very Jon Snow type of reason, which I'll talk about in a second. But actually going back in the timeline, House Stark has actually been much closer to the Targaryen family just in general than you probably thought. Mostly because of Aegon's prophecy and the role the Starks played in maintaining the wall in the Night's Watch. Obviously the North, very important to Aegon the Conqueror and everybody that came after him. So quick history lesson on what happened with the wall in the last several hundred years before the conquest. Before Aegon's conquest, all seven different realms had their seven different petty kings and each realm had a long-standing pact going back to the original Long Night that all of them would work together to support the wall in the Night's Watch. The timeline of the show is a little more condensed than the timeline of the books. In the books, the last Long Night was about 8,000 years ago. On the show, it was more like 1,000 years ago. But you get the idea, the last long night was several hundred years ago before Aegon's conquest. And in those many hundreds of years, the realm had grown much more lax in maintaining the Night's Watch, like people's sons, grandsons, their successors, just generally slowly stopped caring about what was happening at the Wall. Just because activity at the Wall had grown so quiet. So when Aegon the Conqueror had his dragon dream and conquered the Seven Kingdoms to unite the realm, there was this greatly renewed interest in the Wall, the Night's Watch in the North just in general, because in his dragon dream he saw the threat of the White Walkers coming from the North. So here's where we get to the relationship between the Starks and the Targaryens. Torrhen Stark was the current King of Winterfell at the time during the conquest. They were still the Kings of Winter at that time. He bent the knee to Aegon rather than face Balerion the Black Dread's fire because of what Aegon was doing to everyone who would not bend the knee. And even though the books only hint at this, they kind of imply because of what they did on House of the Dragon with Aegon's dragon dream, his real reason for conquering the Seven Kingdoms, is that Aegon actually told Torrhen Stark about the dragon dream in the prophecy of A Song of Ice and Fire, and that's what convinced him to bend the knee. Under Aegon's rule, they sort of had this renewed interest in maintaining the Night's Watch in the Wall. That continues all the way to the time of King Jaehaerys, who took the Iron Throne from Maegor the Cruel, even though there was a lot of infighting in the Targaryen family during that period, during Maegor the Cruel's reign. And over the years, there had been a little bit of acrimony between the Starks, the rest of the realm, the Targaryen family, especially what happened with Maegor. Jaehaerys' wife, Alysanne, smoothed a lot of that over their relationship with the Starks, and she flew to the Wall a lot with her dragon, Silverwing, flew along the Wall with her dragon. So all the way to the time of King Jaehaerys, like right before Viserys takes the Iron Throne, you still have the throne being very interested in what's happening in the North, this whole idea of Aegon's prophecy still being a really big thing. Then when we get to the main events of House of the Dragons season one in the Dance of the Dragons, a lot of what's happening in the Stark family is similar to what happens in the Targaryen family with Rhaenyra and the Greens. So Rickon Stark is the current Lord of Winterfell. He bends the knee to Rhaenyra during this period. But in that giant time jump between episode five and episode six, it's like a 10 year time jump. Basically the exact same thing happens within House Stark. There's this whole battle of the succession. And this is where you get to Kragen Stark, like the new main character inside House Stark in Winterfell during season two. Prince Jaehaerys will fly north and then to Winterfell to treat with Lord Kragen Stark for the support of the north. He's meant to be about the same age as Jaehaerys as Rhaenyra said, oh, you'll get along just fine. This will be great. They'll totally support us. That's why she decided to send him instead of sending Lucerys. In the books, Kragen is just a little bit older than Jaehaerys. And what happened during all those time jumps between episode five and episode six is that Rick and Stark, the older Lord of Winterfell, passed away before the events of episode six. And when that happened, Cragen was way too young to be Lord. So his uncle named Bennard Stark, Rickon's brother, became regent until Cragen came of age. 
But right towards the end of the time jump in episode six, Cragen comes of age and his uncle Bennard refused to hand over control of Winterfell in the north. So the Starks had their own minor little Dance of the Dragons type of event over the Battle of the Succession. It wasn't nearly as big or crazy as the actual Dance of the Dragons itself. And when we get to the events of episode 10, when they're actually talking about going to Winterfell to form a bargain with them to support the Blacks, Cragen Stark has already defeated his uncle, thrown him in prison and taken control of Winterfell. What happened to Cragen between the events of episode 6 and episode 10 though is that after he defeats his uncle, he winds up marrying his childhood sweetheart named Alyssa Nori. They had a son who he named Rickon after his father, but his wife died soon after because of the childbirth because of complications, much like Rhaenyra's mother. You have to remember that this is meant to be a model after medieval period in real history, so the technology, the science is meant to be about the similar level. And women in childbirth during that era had about a 50% life expectancy, so it was pretty even odds, like flip a coin, as to whether or not you would survive childbirth, even if you were a totally healthy person. So on the show, one of the reasons why they select Winterfell as one of the first great houses that they want to go for is because, one, they're thinking about their overwhelming numbers of troops because the North is just so huge. There's so many people that live there. They have a massive army available to them. And because of the relationship between Winterfell and the Vale, it also sort of gives them the backdoor support of the Vale as well. If we're to have enough swords to surround King's Landing, we must first secure the support of Winterfell, the Eyrie, and Storm's End. So it allows them to box the Greens in up in the north like they have no support in the north. And Rhaenyra is banking on this long-standing relationship that goes back to the time of Cregan's father, Rick and Stark, and his oath bending the knee to her. One of the other earlier reasons why Jaceris and Cregan got on so well, just as bros, like two dudes just hanging out, was because Jaceris reminded Cregan of his own younger brother who had also passed away before the events of episode 10, like heading into season 2. So both of them had recently lost a younger brother because Lucerus just lost Lucerus to Aemond and the Greens. R.I.P. Lucerus. The other big reason why Cregan winds up being a huge supporter of Rhaenyra's side is because of a big rumor that comes from Mushroom in the books. They might change the way this happens on the show though a little bit. There was also a rumor that when Jaceris flew Vermax to Winterfell to speak with him, he stayed there for a while like it wasn't just an overnight trip. While he was staying there, Jaceris fell in love with Cragen's half-sister, a bastard named Sarah Snow, and reportedly it was this huge scandal in Winterfell. Cragen got super pissed off, finding them in bed together. Remember, Jaceris is currently betrothed to Bela, so it's also a scandal for that reason as well. And the rumor goes on to say that Jaceris had secretly wed Sarah Snow prior to them being found in bed together in the Stark's Godswood, the same heart tree, the same weirwood that they feature all the time on the main show. Supposedly after Cragen found them in bed together and found out that they had gotten secretly wed, he formed a pact of ice and fire with Jaceris, just the two of them together. Talking about more Song of Ice and Fire references, the Jaceris' and Sarah Snow's firstborn daughter would wed Cragen's son Rickon Stark someday. So obviously this sounds very familiar. Something similar happened during the events of Game of Thrones and Robert's Rebellion because Rhaegar Targaryen, member of the royal family, secretly got married to Lyanna Stark and they had a child together, now legitimate because they had been married when the child was born. Jon Snow, Aegon VI, the son of Ice and Fire, the prince who was promised. There are also a lot of rumors that Jaceris wound up fathering a child with Sarah Snow, but there's no record of the child existing. And we don't know a lot about what happened to Sarah Snow after these events. Without getting too far ahead of the story, like, Cragen continues to be a very big character. So, like, the Starks are a big character during the Dance of the Dragons, along with the aftermath of the Dance of the Dragons. So I don't want to talk too much about what happens later in the books, because it does wind up being kind of spoilers. But one of the reasons why there are so many rumors about what Jaceris did with Sarah Snow while he was up at Winterfell and this potential new child of ice and fire, this potential new fulfillment of the prophecy is because all the material that they're adapting for the show comes from a book called Fire and Blood, which is like a Targaryen family history book. And the book is taken from third-party accounts from Mushroom, the court fool, and this old crusty archmaester. And frequently the archmaester will disagree with Mushroom's account of things because all the spicy stuff in the books, all the really crazy stuff, comes from Mushroom's accounts. Like guess what Prince Jaceris did with the bastard up at Winterfell? They totally had a child and had a secret marriage. There are also a lot of rumors that they sort of hushed up what Jaceris and Sarah Snow did because they didn't want it to cause problems for Bela Targaryen because he'd been betrothed to her and Rhaenyra's side along with the Starks didn't want to completely throw her under the bus either. So a lot of those things sound very similar to what happened with Ned Stark, Jon Snow, Rhaegar Targaryen, Lyanna Stark, where Rhaegar and Lyanna get married, have Jon Snow, and then later Ned Stark tries to cover it all up. No, 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 this isn't uh, Rhaegar's son. This is my bastard. I brought him back from the war. I totally had him with a random girl. 
Keeping secrets up in the north is just par for the course. As of me posting this video, they haven't officially cast Craig and Stark's character or Sarah Snow or the other characters up at Winterfell. We'll probably hear about them in the next year. I've already done a couple House of the Dragon Season 2 videos. You can click here to learn about the alternate ending to Season 1, all the deleted scenes, and click here for all my House of the Dragon episode videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.